Hi, I'm Cayman Reynolds, and in this video we're going to get into this colony here. We're going to feed it with a two-gallon bucket. Then we're going to get into its sister colony. If you want to see what these colonies looked like about a month, month and a week ago, then you can watch this video up here. They were a little bit smaller, and some people have been like, leave them alone, but they had great queens, dead mites, and good nutrition on their side, and they needed more space, and that's what we gave them. All right, let's get in here. It is the tail end of the fall flow. Really not hardly any nectar coming in right now. Little bits here and there. Not enough to add any weight to the colonies. That's why we're feeding. And that's why we recommend that people really pay attention to the flows because it tapers off quickly. And some of these colonies over here are heavy. A full deep box of the real stuff. But some of the colonies are a little bit smaller. Really could benefit from 20, 30, some of them even maybe 40 or 50 pounds of feed. And so we got to identify which of those colonies they are. And this little colony right here is definitely one of them. I've got an old inner cover I purchased. Uh, first or second year I got into beekeeping. It's falling apart on me. I don't have many of them left. And as you can see, we have some Apame frames in here. This is one of the splits from the Apame colony. And look how good that colony looks right there. Again, you can watch the video. I'm going to leave it up in the corner. You can watch that if you want to see what they look like let's get down in there a little bit let's also look at their food stuffs because we're dropping down in the 40s maybe an occasional thir upper 30 and degree night and so that is a good sign that if we're going to feed we need to get a move on so this there's like nothing in this frame over here that needs to be full of honey or sugar syrup which at this point in the year it's going to have to be sugar syrup all right these frames are so slick, but it's all plastic frames. All right, so I'm seeing some food stuffs, a little bit of brood, more capped brood. All right, this is not the greatest looking frame. Get off of me, B, thank you. All righty. Well, that one looks a little bit better. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Yeah, lots of calved brood. We have pollen down in there that's really important as they're developing these winter bees. The bees look clean. They look shiny. A lot of fuzzy bees. Those are going to be our overwintering bees. We got some pollen baskets. We got one up there. There's one down in here that's really nice and big. Yeah, this is so important but they are running low on energy. I'm not seeing any capped honey up above this brood. That's not something we want to see at this time. That is something we want to see this time of the year. Got a good bit of capped brood right here. The queens lay in a good pattern. They just need a little bit more food. We're just going to pull up one more frame and then we're going to show you the sister colony. All right. We got another frame with a decent bit of capped brood. They've actually drawn on this one a little bit. And this one's just full of eggs and larvae down in there. Different stages. And, you know, the queens are slowing down a little bit this time of the year. It's just natural. But I do believe that this will be a good overwintered colony for us, especially for what it was when we put it in here. But they need some food. And they need it now. When I was checking this one earlier, there was a couple more good frames of brood over here. I imagine it's going to overwinter as around an eight frame cluster. Nothing wrong with that at all. I like them a little bit bigger. But when we moved this colony from the original hive, which was the Apame, that was split in half, all of the forager bees stayed back with the original colony. Let's uh, throw the feed on really quick. And then we'll get over there. Wow. Pretty good bit of bees. Shake those down. Carefully slide that on. And you can just see the bees coming in here. What I had before, just tons of pollen baskets. That's great. There's, yeah, orange, yellow. But I had this right here and I left a little front entrance and they decided they'd rather use that than use the entrance at the front of the hive, which is interesting. We've also had a couple light days of rain, maybe a quarter inch of accumulation. It didn't affect this colony at all. It's amazing actually that bees can handle a little bit of water getting in the hive um, when it's warm enough that they can, they can deal with it. 
Um, I don't recommend you do that at all, but you should see some of the hives that I've seen in areas like Hawaii where, you know, it's pretty mild year round and uh, some of those hives are a little bit leaky. All right, so I've got my two gallon bucket right here. We gotta watch out for robbing this time of the year. Lots of pollen baskets. Now those bees are eventually gonna learn to go to the front entrance. Thankfully this has got a big enough of a lip, a lip that it's not gonna, you know, the bees are gonna be able to move around down in there. There's gonna be quite a bit of leakage at first. You can see all that right there. The vacuum's being created. And I'm just gonna center it right over that hole. And now we've put on a lot of feed. This is about 1.5 to 1, so it's thicker than 1 to 1. Trying to put on a little poundage here. Need to get those outer frames completely full. Want to see those middle brood frames with about an inch and a half or so of capped syrup all around the top and then it gets a little wider towards the edge. We want to see plenty of food. This cluster coming into February when the maple pollen start hitting, we want them to go full steam ahead and they're only going to do that if they feel like they have the energy necessary to warm the brood nest mm -hmm. and expand it out. All right, let's go to the next time. We're over here with the sister colony. They're drawing out foundation. We're getting new combs first week of October. I'm not used to this. I think there's multiple things at play here. First of all, both of the compartments were packed with bees and a decent bit of brood. The one we were just visiting over there was on this right side. What you see now is what was the remainder from the left side. But keep in mind, again, all of the forager bees from the one that we took over there remained with this colony. They just bonded. That's exactly one of the important factors of drawing comb is that you have a lot of older bees. Why do swarms draw so much comb so quickly? It's because they're all pretty much the ideal age of drawing out wax. And if you were to wait a month after that swarm got into the hive, they wouldn't be near as good at it as they're going to be in that first or second week. And that is because they are at the right age. The nutrition's obviously coming in because it's usually prime time of spring, all that stuff. But we have a surplus amount of older bees. We fed them, which is an important component. There was plenty of pollen coming in, had a young queen that was wanting to lay. Both of these queens are new. Just all the right factors were coming into play. And I mean, look at this right here. This obviously is not fully drawn, but the original colony only had 10 drawn combs down below. And there are at least two, four, six, seven drawn well. And this one they're starting on over here. So we need to get a lot more feed into this colony. I'm probably gonna feed two gallons of syrup to it in a week. Try to continue to get that drawn. Also start packing in some stores. Let's check out a little bit more and then we're gonna dive down and see how they're doing. But this is another example of a great queens, dead mites, and good nutrition. You just see how they've drawn all this out. They're still working down in here, but they're gonna do it. Oh, another factor is the, uh, the insulation. I really feel like that is a component here. We're excited to be really pushing hard towards an experimental yard next year. It's going to take thousands and thousands of dollars, but um, a lot of you have been very generous. Um, we've got some other um, folks that are contributing as well, and we're really hoping that we're going to be able to do that. You can see where they've started over here just a little bit and just working their way on down. But one of the things that I'm going to do to encourage that a little bit more is move some of the fully capped frames towards the outer end and get the partially drawn ones more towards the center. That heat is important. Now again, the insulation really helps with that and I think that's one of the reasons why they're doing so well. Multiple factors, but we've got to feed hard and we're going to have to uh, do our best to help them out. I'm not saying everyone needs to start trying to draw combs in October, but it is interesting to me because I rarely see this in my area. All right, so this one is completely drawn out. This is a good example of a frame that needs to go to the complete outside. Yeah, and they're just, they're capping that. So we're going to whew, just about pinch that one and got it right next to my thumbnail. Those always feel amazing, by the way. If you haven't experienced that, you're truly missing out on a once in a lifetime experience. You will never forget. All right. So we're gonna stick that over here. And again, we're just trying to get these that are partially drawn more towards the center. I wanna dive down and look at the brood. One thing we don't wanna do 
is separate the brood from the center. If there's brood in the center, we want to leave it there. So this is another one of solid honey slash sugar syrup. Yeah. So we're going to stick that over here. And I'm going to pull this one to the center here in a second. This one's got brood on it. Let's check and see what they look like. And this might be the frame that I pulled up, trying to encourage them to come up and draw the foundation. I brought up a frame of larvae. You can see a, a decent pattern here. I'm seeing eggs and larvae down in here. The glare is really rough right now, the angle of things. But um, I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing. Oh yeah, just tons and tons of eggs right here. This is a great frame to keep up here in the center and butt up a couple of partially drawn foundations against it because they are going to be focused on this area and trying to draw combs next to that brood. So that's great. All right, let's get this out of here. This one's not even started. I'll move this one. Move this one that's full. This one looks like it has a tiny bit, yeah, a tiny bit of brood on it. We'll keep that one right here. And since it's an insulated hive and we're still getting in the 70s, I'm gonna go ahead and stick this one that's pretty well drawn this way. And this again, this side's partially drawn, so we're putting that up against this frame of larvae. That's going to really encourage them to finish that out. Now I've got two that are pretty much hardly drawn at all. And we are going to stick. This one's pretty drawn. I'm going to stick that there. Stick that here. And again, we're going to have to really put the feed to this colony. You know, between now and by the time we're done feeding, we're probably going to be pumping four to five gallons of syrup into this colony to get it winter weight size and also to I'll just help them draw that come out. Now watch this right here. You see that? This can be a problem whether it's wax foundation or plastic foundation. A lot of times if they start on the bottoms they might do it from the top bars down there and they start building up, attach it here. Sometimes they'll continue that up and make a really funny looking comb. So we don't want that we're running out of camera space. I'll be right back. And here's round three. All right, so we're getting down into the <laughs> bottom box. And sorry, we had to get some more space on the camera. And we're just going to check and see kind of what's going on down here. We put almost all the frames of brood. So I'm interested to see what she's doing this time of the year. Bees are getting a little antsy. That one kind of acted like it wanted to sting me. White pollen baskets there, so that's why I smoked my hand. Is uh, to kind of knock any maybe pheromone it might have left behind. This is looking pretty light down here. There's bees emerging out of this. That's great. Got some, a lot of young bees coming on out. Sorry, I don't have a very good grip on that frame. There we go. Better grip now. Wow, okay, so a lot of emerging brood coming out of here. Bees are running around a pretty good bit. I've been in them for a while. We're just going to check a couple more frames, see what we got to look forward to down here. All right. I've got cat brood on the next frame over. There's the queen right there. She's got a little bit of a blue spot left. She's going around and laying. In those cells. I'm seeing a good bit of bee bread, but definitely the queen's slowing down. It's going to be interesting to see if we can actually get the rest of this drawn. I want to put this down here below. Yeah, definitely going to be putting some hardcore feeding to this colony. The nice thing is we got an insulated hive, so even if they shrink down to eight frames or whatever it's just i think they're going to be able to do a lot more coming out of winter and i'm really looking forward to that here we go into some good frames of capped and miscellaneous stuff right here let's go over to the next one i'm seeing drone bees in here some of you are saying there's no more drones 
We've got plenty of drones in our hives right now, especially our big ones. This one's kind of medium in size. But I'm still seeing plenty of drones in here. You know, there's some more brood, larvae, all kinds of different things. So, you know, this hive looks good. You can definitely tell that they're not as gung-ho, especially for all the diverse pollens that coming in. They're just not trying to brood up full steam ahead. That's a nice frame right there. Goodness, I just can't help it. I've got to check that one out too. And, uh, but it's, it's good. They need some bee bread to come out of winter if all possible. Nice. This looks great. And, uh, you know, we got some capped brood over here. I'm seeing eggs and stuff down in here. We got some capped brood over here. All right. But yeah, they're, they're slowing down, and it's important for them to have, if possible, some bee bread coming out of winter. You know, it really helps them out quite a bit. And sometimes the fall flow is good, and we've had a really good especially pollen fall flow and in some of our yards we've had a really good nectar flow and some of them we have had a feed a lot we've had to have feed a lot more so that's just the way life is you've just always got to get into your colonies and check them and see what's going on there's a little bit of robbing starting so we need to get and shut this colony up get finished and so thanks for watching this video if you have any questions excited to try more insulated hives in the future because there's a lot of data showing that they can really help our bees out. I'm curious to see just how much. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.